Welcome back, everybody, to WCS America Group H action. Only two best of threes remain, and then we will know our 16 players that we will welcome here to Cologne, to the ESL Studios, on the 4th and 5th of April to play WCS America round of 16. Will Select make a comeback and uh, go all the way, or is Spock going to be there for the first time? Or will Sen make another appearance at WCS America round of 16? We will know in roughly one hour and 30 minutes from now. Yeah, just two series left to go. And that, uh, as you said, comes down, well, I guess begins with our losers match. Select the uh, the Korean-American Terran player going up against Sen, the Taiwanese Zerg. This is our only Terran versus Zerg of the night, Roddy. Yep, and I think it's going to be a really good one. Both these players have a huge reputation within the StarCraft scene. They've been around for a long time. Had a lot of international success as well. Select once upon a time a runner-up of an MLG event. Sen really uh, well performing in the NASL seasons back then. Always takes third place. And just in general, he's been a very successful Zerg player. This is our second last series of the night. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the broadcast. If you're still awake from Europe, we want to hear from you. Or, of course, if you're watching from America, hashtag WCS at Twitter. And, of course, make sure to follow StarCraft at, at StarCraft on Facebook and Twitter. And last but not least, if you want to read anything about any of the WCS regions, always take a look at StarCraft2.com slash WCS. And now we should hop into this game on Habitation Station because, Nate, crazy stuff is happening. We, Reddit is going to love this. We, we just started, and it's already happening. Ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, I would introduce the man spawning in the top left position, but he is gone. He has <laughs> he has packed his bags and sailed away. Our blue tear player select is uh, he's in the air right now. He is. And his opponent, who will soon, well, he's he's going to be caught off guard by this. I think, Roddy. Do you think Sen reads Reddit, Nathan? I don't know, but I wonder if he watches Marine Kings games. <laughs> well, that is probably something that he's uh, he's doing. Sen is going to be a red zerg, like you said, in the right top side of Habitation Station. This Overlord is pretty much going to scout it immediately. And are we going to see perhaps the most interesting discussion that we have seen in the recent weeks on Reddit? Will Sen just pull all of his drones and will Select be able to wall in time? Or is Sen going to play a normal game from this point? I can't wait to figure this one out. It's it's the ultimate bait because you could technically try to do something like this, take the gold base and say, well, you know what? I'd rather play a completely normal game. But then you end up in a you end up in a position where the gold base sometimes just acts as a as a as a taunt, as a bait to try to force a Zerg player to do something they otherwise normally wouldn't do. But it looks like Sen still sending his drone down to his natural isn't going to react in any crazy manner to this, at least not yet. Nope. Opening up 15 hatch despite his opponent's build. Yeah, he sees it and he says like, all right, I'm still just going to go hatch first. So from this point on, Sen is going to play normal. Now, Nate, you're a turn player. Uh, I think you're cheeky enough that you've tried this once or twice in your latter days. Uh, or on your ladder adventures. How did this go for you? What do you worry about as a Terran if they do not do drone pool? And what is the strength of this build? Why is Select doing this? Well, the, the obvious biggest strength is it actually ends up delaying. When you fly over, it delays the, the first barracks by like 10 seconds, but it lets you get the second one so much faster that doing this type of two barracks aggression isn't that difficult. And you have a lot of extra resources if you want to do something like place down bunkers. A big weakness of this that I've seen, and uh, most of the games I've actually seen of this are Hero Marine, really loves to do this style, and we can see in the gas being taken from Sen that a lot of Zerg players just like to get their natural, and then just do something like a Baneling Bust or a Speedling Attack, because you don't, you actually can't uh -oh. really fit too much behind this, but Select is just saying, hey, I'm gonna leave a couple SCVs and use the gold minerals to wow. get more money so I can, well, build oh these bunkers, God. and Sen has no idea this is coming. Select has not scouted at all. By the time he's gonna see that first bunker, it will pretty much be done. That is quite sloppy from Sen. I don't think there was any need for him to send that second overload to that base as well. Now he's going to see this, and I can only imagine that Sen is in so much trouble. Well, at least the one SCV brought a couple gold minerals over as a <laughs> gift. The drones come down, but... He, he comes in peace. The rest, they, could, they come <laughs> with uh, angry intentions. Yeah, not uh, not the most friendly of workers you've seen in StarCraft. And he's brought pretty much all of his drones down to mine from this natural. Even though the SCV is getting in some fisticuff uh, action, but there's the rest of the Marines starting to fill this bunker up. No the way. drones try to surround, but with, with so many SCVs available to repair, it seems that Select, he uh, he might have a very fast game on his hands. There's no spine crawler. The Queen pops out, but more Marine reinforcements continuing to stream from that gold base. And uh, Select's taking a worker lead. I, I, this is, seems this like is... an almost irrecoverable position. 
position now, especially with the second bunker. Even if he kills the first one, he can fall back. And he still has SCVs to repair. Uh, this has to be almost game over right now. 21 supply against 12 supply. Only seven drones remain. There will be two queens, but GG is called. And Select wins the game on Habitation Station in 5 minutes and 60 seconds. Wow. Record time. for uh, I, I, I wonder how many... I guess we've had other two racks in WSS America, mm -hmm. but that was... That was a pretty fast game, especially with the gold liftoff. Sometimes, you know, as a Zerg player, you and I had actually discussed this earlier. It's like, well, do you want to play completely normal? Do you have to do something crazy to respond? I don't think Sen necessarily had to pull all of his drones to win the game, but going 15 hatch and not leaving anything to watch is natural. The, yeah. the normal follow-up, whenever you do this build, you always it's, you get your depot fast, but you always go two barracks after you take the gold base. And as a Zerg player, you have to respect the possibility that they're going to try to cheese you after that. You have to respect it. Yeah, he did, he, two, he, two barracks is a good build. He did not respect the two racks. <laughs> the, yeah, the he did not. He did not. Looking at the score screen, we see perfect macro by Select this game. He has been supply cap for a grand total of zero seconds, Nate. Select's macro is... <laughs> it says, that says, uh, his macro is rolling today, man. Yeah, that's, that's a great start for him, for sure. And I'm sure that that win gives him a little bit of momentum. As Sen, you have to be thinking, well, okay. You know, it's, it's like one yeah. of those situations where... You move the first overlord out and get that second, that scout. But I actually, it's something I'd probably want to look at later and even in the replays. Where did that second overlord go that he wasn't watching his natural? Was it, he? It, it's pretty much the same place. Like that one overlord flew over the base. Like first he like put it above the Rexes and then he flew it a little more to the uh, southwest side, that would be. Mm -hmm. And then the other overlord was on the north side again. I guess one like checking on the side to see where those Marines were going. And he wanted to have the other overlord looking at those refineries. But yeah, that's just, it's just sloppy not to take yeah, a look at your net for it all. It seemed just a little bit careless, mm -hmm. uh, especially against Select 2. I mean, you don't even need gold bases. Select, Select's known for some two racks action every now and again <laughs> it, anyway. It is. Our second map is going to be played on Frost. It will most likely be a little longer. Hopefully none of you guys missed it because I told all of you to, you know, take a break and maybe get some chips or something. Now someone might be com coming back. He's like, cool, TVZ, select with the sun. Like, what? what so was, exactly. It's like, yeah. Frost, oh, we're starting on Frost. No, wait, yeah. they already squeezed a game in somehow, but... That's a nice edge for Select. Like we were talking about, we haven't I haven't seen him stream much lately. We haven't seen too many of his games. And he didn't have to show anything real in that game. He was like no. he's like, okay, I have a response. You know, he checked. He was looking to very quickly finish his wall with another depot. He didn't need to. But this is one of those things as a Terran player, you can have a, you can write a build off for a map and say, I know what to do for a certain number of situations, and I'm very confident I can win. And now Sen has absolutely no idea what Slick's going to do. We don't know if he's going to go for um, what was a little bit more popular a couple weeks ago, any type of mech-based play, fast heli like double factory Hellion's been really popular, or if he plays a completely standard command center first in the bio. There's there's a ton of options for Select, and Sen doesn't know much of anything right now. Yeah, there's absolutely no telling in uh, what Select will show us. What we do know about Sen is that if the game keeps on going, he has ridiculously good macro, and especially against foreigners, Sen just loses very, very rarely. It, it's been this weird thing ever since Senna started playing StarCraft and this might even go back to Brood War and I think some of the Brood War players have even confirmed that to me in the past that so, uh, Sen just seems to play a lot better against foreigners in general than he does against Koreans it's like this mental my block that he had had for the longest time will he be able to bounce back in this series? well, let's go find out as Frost is alive and Dignitas Select is going to be our Blue Terran currently leading 1-0 in this series spawning on the northeast corner of Frost yeah, very cheeky play in the first game to give himself this 1-0 advantage up against our Red Zerg in the top left. Uh, the Taiwanese player, Sen, who would like to get keep that uh, foreigner killing streak alive at least as much as he can. But, uh, you know, this is a map where he won't have any trouble doing a, or at least shouldn't normally have any trouble. I don't think I've seen anybody except, was it Maru in a Pro League match like maybe a week or two ago tried to two racks to the center of this map versus a Zerg? How did that go? They, they, they think he won, but it's not very common. I don't, I, I can't exactly remember. I just remember seeing it and just <laughs> being blown away. Four player maps is it's always the map that you least expect it on, but that's kind of what makes it a bit easier to execute at times. Yeah, but you need to get luck as well where, wherever you drop your Rexes. Because even if you drop it in the middle, if it's on the left side of the middle, but it would be all the way in the right side, that takes like five or ten extra seconds for yeah. your Marines to be there. And if they already have to run quite a while, uh, it's going to be hard to pull it off. Either way, the winner of this series will go on to face Puck. So if Select would close out this series right now, then we would see a rematch between Select and Puck. As, of course, early today we saw Max set advance. 
Select uh, Sen is still, of course, not too worried. He will go hedge first. It seems like Select is going to go command center first on the low ground, even. Yeah, this is this is not a bad build for this map. The one advantage for Sen is with his first Overlord, it seems, going towards the right side. He could scout this within a reasonable amount of time if you want to take a very fast third hatch. Depends if you wanted to go gas first, though. And it looks like he will start the spawning pool, so it's not early enough that he gets the, the ultimate read on it, but hmm. he's uh, he will at least be able to scout this. And Slick begins his barracks. Do you think he might even drop another hatchery before he drops his extractor? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the one thing I was saying that he, he probably could huh. do, but he's already started that gas. I don't think... I mean, Reaper play is incredibly popular across the board. There's, I feel like I've been seeing a lot... There's been a lot less command center firsts against Zerg, but it's still not bad. And actually, as I say, that send does cancel that gas. He might be looking to take that fast third base, and SCB mm -hmm. will get there in time to scout it, but he hasn't moved out a drone yet. He's just banking up a little bit of resources, maybe just for his queens first. Yeah, uh, either way, we'll see. Well, Drone is heading south right now, so I do think he's still going to go three hatcheries before uh, before gas, which is a pretty common uh, reaction to scouting this command center for us, and that's the nice thing about his Overlord heading into the right direction at the start of this game. Uh, are we expecting, like, maybe after uh, one Marine, and then a Reaper, and then another command center for Select? Is that... Is that something that we could expect? Um, late Reapers aren't really as uh, as much of a thing in this matchup. Sometimes some players do it against Protoss, but it's not too hard to scout the Zerg in the early game, especially since Select knows that there's no gas. Uh, most likely, you, just, you get one or two Marines and then go straight up to your factory. Uh, and after, as the second Marine finishes, you have enough to get your reactor. So Select starts the factory. The real big tell... Uh, for what Select is going to do in the mid game is whether he takes the second gas reasonably soon. Is he, does he want to move for a cloak Banshee off two base? There's not as much to say about Sen's build because, like as you said, if he takes no gas, he, only, he can only really build queens, maybe take a third base, but there's a lot less to look into for this. And even Sen actually been having a, a Zergling or two scout around his base. Mm -hmm. We do see a second refinery go down, and it's actually in the main, which is a smart move, because Sen does have this Overlord lurking around over here on the north side, which will keep a close eye on this Vespian geyser. And now Sen might think, like, oh, okay, it's just a single gas, so I have to worry about a bunch of Hellions. But there could still be that potential follow-up of a Cloak Banshee, and that would be very hard to scout for Sen. Yeah, I, I honestly feel like this is something that Terran players in, in, in general do much less than Protoss players that you'd see the, mm -hmm. taking the gas at the expansion before the main base uh, to fool out the Zerg. And he has a starport tucked in the right side. The Marines wouldn't be in position, I think, yet to stop this Overlord from seeing it. But this is the only Overlord. If he doesn't get over there and spot it, if any Marines manage to find that Overlord... He'll have no idea that it's coming in. You can still reasonably assert that a lot of Terran players these days will open up Banshee or uh, or a lot of Hellions for pressure, but he's even getting some Widow Mines out pretty early on before he even gets any what? Hellions. Is he going to go Widow Mine drop? A two base Widow Mine drop is <laughs> certainly not a common build. He's getting a third command center as well. This is a little bit different than what I. What most uh, Terran players are doing right now. I still think we're going to see it, Nate, because the Medivac is on the way. So he has two, meta, two Widow Mines over here. He's building two more. If he drops two Widow Mines in both bases and there is no lay attack just yet, it's going to take a little while before the Spore Crawlers are ready. You know, this could really disrupt the flow of Sen's economy. Yeah, it's a very weird build that I think you can huh. only do because Select knows there's no gas. He doesn't, or at least there was no crazy early gas. He doesn't have to worry about he being hit with Speedlings or uh, any type of Baneling bust because I feel like if a oh. Zerg player tries to do any level of heavy two-base wow. aggression uh, without having Hellions on the map, you just kind of die. And that Overlord, I don't even think, saw too much. Didn't I even know. see the Starport. Uh, no, it didn't see the Starport. It saw the, uh, the other command center, the third one, and it saw the tech lab spinning. So it might be that Overlord even fooled Sen a little bit. If I was Sen and I just scouted what I did, well, he did drop one Spore Crawler over here in the main base. He's actually dropping one in the nature as well. So, wow, sick read by uh, Sen. Yeah, I feel like I, I don't think he's expecting a mind drop per se, but definitely Banshee at the very minimum. And now he knows it's a medevac. The problem with the with the mine play is that it's just you don't you can't micro mines to do extra damage in this phase of the game. You can try to run them around, but he doesn't have the the movement uh, capabilities of the Hellions. He will burrow a mine in the natural expansion. Oh, juicy shot as well there. Five. Yeah, that's uh, that's not too bad at all. Burrows wow. two at that third and hits a few links and one of the eggs. Yeah, not too bad. Killed six drones. Yeah, he still has and he still has these two mines here. He has to wait for the spore crawler, of course, but. We're, I guess the medevac is still kind of waiting. I don't think he's going to be able to, to rescue those two mines. Well, there's so, there so many queens, so most likely the, 
the creep spread for Sen will be absolutely ridiculous this game. Yeah, Sen still knows that these winner mines are he's a little worried right now because they might shoot again soon, but they won't shoot in time as these links will be able to clean it up. So overall, well done by Sen. It was very good for him that he had spore crawlers in every single base. Otherwise, this could have been a lot more annoying than it eventually was. Uh, but Select still got a fortunate shot over here, killing those five drones. Yeah, he got something for his money, really. Um, I'm not sure the trade-off of not having Hellions is worth it, though. He gives up complete map control to send, which means, as you said, these queens can go to town spreading creep. There's absolutely nothing to delay the creep spread. This Viking from Select up top is also pretty nice, but when you consider the spawn locations, it's really easy. <laughs> Sven's actually transfusing his Overlord. Yeah, why not? Um, if you have, like, five queens... And it's a it's a it's a smart thing to do, and he actually already sends it back. He's like, "Yep, I'm just going to keep my eyes on the potential drop paths." A zergling sees the third base plant for select, but also look at it this way: he didn't really do too much real damage, and one one is already done for Sen. His spire is on the way. Plus one attack is only about thirty seconds in for select. This gas investment he's made hasn't really done too much for him as far as uh, giving him a real edge in this game. Definitely true. Sen is up 18 workers as well. Of course, that will be sort of evened out. But it's over to commence. Here do come those overlord, uh, those manifacts, though. And I think most of the zerglings are a little bit out of position, but a lot of zerglings were on the production tab. And they just hatched over there in the natural. 30 marines is still kind of scary. We have 24 marines over here out of these three manifacts. Select is doing a fantastic job over here. Yeah, this is a pretty smart way. As long as you can kill off all of these zerglings, he gets the queen as well. And... It's a pretty bold move to make, but there's no Banelings on the map, which gives him that opportunity. The one thing is, he, I mean, he chewed up a lot of Zerglings, so it'll require a lot of Larva to replace them, mm. but he didn't do any economic damage. That's and Sen true. actually is oversaturated. You can see at his third base, he can move those over to the fourth when it's done. So Select, for all intents and purposes, has delayed a potential attack towards him, but he hasn't really uh he hasn't really done I, I feel like as much damage as you'd want to do at this stage of the game maybe if he could clean up some of these creep tumors he'd be in a in a, in a little bit of a better spot but it's yeah. it's really hard to attack it's gonna be really hard to attack this fourth base if this creep spread gets past the halfway mark uh definitely well one scan will go down he's gonna be able to pick up a couple of these creep tumors he will try to use this zelnaga watchtower as some sort of a staging ground 14 mutalisk right now on the production tab uh that's a lot of mutas with this phase in the game yeah, this is, uh, I mean, you can you can clearly see how comfortable Sen is. He's keeping most of his Zerglings and Banelings on his side of the map. I don't even know if he's had his army even leave the creep at this point. He doesn't feel a need to really be aggressive right now because, uh, in, in all honesty, he's, he's in a pretty good spot. Uh, select, on the other hand, he does have his third base saturated. I don't, even, I don't think there's any missile turrets anywhere, though. So those Mutalisks you mentioned, the 14, could do quite a bit of damage. And this one drop will hit the fourth base for Select. There's already a spine crawler though. The Zerglings show up very quickly. And now the Mutalisks will descend upon this medevac. Yeah, Select sees it and he's like, probably most likely like, oh, that's quite a few Mutalisks. Select, uh, Sen even gonna try go up to f five bases already. His fifth base at the 13 minute mark, that's pretty sick. That's the Sen we know and the Sen we love. That just loves to make a ridiculous amount of, you know, Zerglings, Banelings and often Mutalisks as well and just try to overrun your opponent. Plays a very entertaining style of Zerg, I would like to say. Yeah, Look at I those upgrades, he's gonna have two too soon. Yeah, I feel like he's trying to pull uh, pull Select into a... Wow, Ooh. those Mutalisks taste some pain. But I feel like he's trying to bait Select into stepping onto the creep. He refuses to take any engagement off the creep. He hasn't attacked uh, in any way, even though Select is at the tower. He's just not stepping forward. And look at this infestation pit. He can even get his hive up at a reasonable time. And he could still get 3-3 in tandem with Select. You Sometimes Zerg players, uh, it's, it's said that the matchup strength for Terran is getting upgrades faster. But that might not be the case this game. A lot of Zerglings and Bane is going to try to roll in a couple of Marauders. We all get surrounded. Widow Mines are connecting with some of these Terran units as well. There was one happy Zergling that could have done something about this command center, but the Mutalisk will take over and will maybe even be able to cancel this command center, right? Yeah, they should. Yeah, it's really frustrating for Select, especially since there's a fifth base on the way, but these Zerglings give chase. Ooh. The Widow Mines get a couple decent shots. The Banelings not able to connect with the Marines, though. Ah, uh, good micro Very by nice Select. Very nice for Select. Yeah, well done by Select. Select has always been quite known for his micro, but he's not dead just yet. A couple of those Widow Mines, of course, on cooldown. He has a few more to fall back on, but now these Mines will most likely blow up Terran units as well. 
Yeah, this is a really rough spot to be in. Fighting with the Banelings off creep. This is where you can see that Terran. Uh, you can see why Sen didn't want to engage him off the creep before, and he's actually allowed Select to take some decent trades, but Select needs to do a little bit more damage. He's down significantly in supply. These Banelings helping a little bit to defend this uh, fourth base in the southwest, and Select still pushing forward with his bio troops. He, I think he realizes he's, he's not out of the woods just yet. There's still a lot of Ling Bane on the ground, and he still needs to kill some actual drones. <laughs> Widomize once more getting juicy shots up and one very low HP Marauder was in a very sad and dark place when he saw all the Zerglings heading in. Uh, Sen is just producing an unreal amount of Zerg units. I have no idea how he's keeping his money this low while playing Middling Bane. With those two two upgrades right now, it's just units and units only for him. Select tried to do something on the other side of the map with a drop pod. There's just Zerg everywhere. Sen picking up this base as well. This is, uh, this is godly macro by Sam. Yeah, the Thor gets swallowed up oh and my. tries to retreat behind the wall, but the Banelings are more than a match for the structures as the Marines run away into the mineral line. Select is down 100 supply to Sen, and Sen is saying, yep, I can definitely take you in a macro game when there are no gold mm -hmm. bases for you to float to. And he's, he looks like he will be most likely able to tie this series up one to one. Select sending his last few units out of his main base, throwing his last mines. Even the SCVs being healed by medevacs to fight Zerglings. They do a little better than they normally do, but it won't be enough. GG is called. Sen evens up this series after a very convincing game on Frost. Uh, wow. If you're Select, you three, you, you're two Rex in game three. Hey, it's. I uh, actually not entirely sure what the third map will be, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like it. If it's Select's choice, if he had any input, I feel like he probably wants those two-player maps. Uh, yeah, maybe a Young Su or something like that. Yeah, that wouldn't, wouldn't be too bad, I guess. I it's it's so it's always weird. The it, it never it never feel like when just two raxing in general can just sometimes be so difficult to not get scouted because where is their mm -hmm. players move those overlords change is so so frequently it seems these days. But uh, I a mm. little bit worried for Select that game he had. There was no early aggression towards him. He tried something that was a little bit um, unusual, didn't pay off at all, and I would say set him behind. If he wants to play macro, I'd like to see him just maybe slip back towards a more standard play, open with the Hellions to deny that creep spread. And uh, you know, even if you throw Hellions away, usually you're able to get more than a couple drones for, for the cost of those Widow Mines and that Medevac. It's pretty similar uh, with the, mostly the same results. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess the mines did not really pay for themselves in the end, and above all, they gave Sen a lot of freedom. Uh, but I must say, like we should give definitely all the props to Sen for capitalizing yeah. on that freedom. He just expanded like a madman, spread creep very well. Uh, that first drop of those 24 marines, those true full medevacs, that looked a little scary, but I guess those zerglings traded a little better because they had 1-1 on that moment and the marines were still 0-0. Like, Sen just had barely enough units to not actually take any economic damage, like you mentioned, that's so important in that phase. Uh, from that point on, Sen just did it. Uh, Sen just did what Sen does best, and that is produce way too many Zerg units yeah, for Terran uh, to deal with. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is right back to your comment about the macro. The, for Sen to hold that big drop, that mm. was only needed. And, I mean, if you're a Zerg player and the Terran player opens up with no Hellions at the start of a game out of a command center first, like you have to be feeling so comfortable. He he didn't necessarily mm. see the starport, but you're like, okay, he doesn't have Hellions. Uh, you know, just just get spores. What else could he be doing with the factory if he's not doing Hellions? Mines, okay, maybe just a fast starport. Okay, Banshees and Mines, both dealt with by the spores. And that's just Sen playing a really smart game. And, well, taking advantage of the fact that there was no ground harassment force to uh, to keep him from doing pretty much whatever he wanted to. And at the end of the day, of course, when you're on three bases as Zerg, so uncontested, and you know that your opponent opened up with a very economic opening, he's squeezing out a lot of thrones, you might as well invest in a Spore Crawler per base. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? You lose 150 minerals, like... Uh, you should be able to recover from that if you have three saturated bases, especially if you have, like, on your third base, you have, like, 26 drones on minerals, uh, like the 10-minute mark in the game, or barely even. Either way, game number three is going to be played on Polar Night. It is a two-player map. Will Select go crazy? We're about to find out. And here is our uh, potentially crazy man in the north position of Polar Night, the Blue Terran from Team Dignitas. It is Select. Two racks or no two racks? That is that is the question for a map such as this. As uh, this man should definitely keep his eyes open for the potential. Um, our red Zerg player, Sen. Just great macro to tie this series up, really. Uh, Sen is like, if Sen gets comfortable in a game, he is so scary. And we haven't seen Sen go up against Puck yet, so that would definitely be one of the series. 
I've always been very impressed with Pox PvZ. Um, I'm not sure if it still is, but I think for a while it was his best matchup. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, how he feels about it in this day and age. However, that would be a really cool series, but it would also be awesome to see a rematch between Select and uh, Puck. And perhaps this time Select's army won't be cut in half by a bunch of rocks rolling down. <laughs> well, that's, that's, really, that's really it, isn't it, though? It's, it's all about momentum in these series as well. I feel like Select, uh, you, you open up the series with that lift off to the gold, you get a quick win. It's got to be something that reinforces your confidence. You're saying, I only need to win one game, and then Sen just absolutely mauls him in the in the long game and you gotta be wondering what, what's running through select's head right now and I, I think if he can take this series with the level of play we're seeing from Sen, i feel like that could be a huge confidence boost going into a final match especially yeah i couldn't agree more but uh, i have no idea what's going to select's mind right now it's probably something like ah oh, zerk pretty good kid <laughs> Some, something among those lines yeah it's, uh, it's 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 interesting. There's a lot of different opinions on uh, Terran versus Zerg. Some a lot of Terran players have really been mixing up their compositions lately. And Select in the last game played a mostly Marine Mine style. We saw him trying to move towards the th Thors in the later stage of the game. But there's yeah. been you know some Terran players don't care. They'll still just go pure Marine Mine. I know some players like Daishi tell me to say it's the best way to play the matchup. And then there's some players that. Um, you've seen compositions come out of players like Fantasy and Pro League with lots of Blue Flame, Hellions, and Marauders, and Thors for anti-air with just a few Marines. So there's a little bit more variety in this matchup, but as Select moves this Reaper out, we still don't we don't know quite exactly yet what's going to happen. Just a very standard opening uh, from both players at this point. Of course, Frost is a better map for uh, Select as well. Like It's not as wide open in the middle as uh, Frost is. Like it, It's very hard. For uh, select once there is a lot of crew spread to get some of a favorable engagement here on polar night with a couple of the cliffs here and there it might be a little easier for him this reaper uh, will probably not get a drone but it will get a good scout you will see that sen is not as economic as he is in the previous game because i think in that game he didn't make those six zerglings up to like the 10 minute mark yeah it's it's <laughs> one of the one of the nice things one of the reasons why the, the Reaper opening can be strong is if you look at how what happened in the last game at the command center first You don't need those zerglings. You don't even cancel the gas, but now this game Ooh. he does get enough for speed almost gets the drone He really wants the drone. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> That Reaper almost pays for the drone with its life and he has a factory on the way So this is oh, still pretty wow. normal these zerglings what, even we see these slip by somehow towards this base and this is really annoying yep. uh, Force select has to put out a couple of these marines to help deal with that and it delays the expansion and I, As I can tell you from experience these tiny things it might not seem like much He doesn't have to cancel he lost one SCV But this is one of those weird types of things that can actually cause you to get supply blocks since his factory is done I don't I don't actually know if he can start his hellions just yet. He's gonna just finish a few more marines yeah, uh, it will supply block him. Above all, this is the type of stuff that's really annoying. You're like, ah, oh, I should have seen that. Why do I not see those Zerglings make their way across the map? This is a really quick armory, and I think it's already been scouted over here by Sen. I'm not even sure if Select saw it. Now another starport going down. What's this all about? Is this Hellbats? Select is pulling out some interesting builds today. <laughs> Let's just say that. Hellbat drops. <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I saw Hellbat drops in this matchup. Is it a, maybe MVP would have been the most recent player to attempt it? But this is certainly outside of the, the current meta. It can still be strong. The, the changes that were made to Hellbats, you know, once upon a time don't affect their matchup versus Zerglings at all. So they can still be good versus Zerg players. You're just less likely to kill drones easily in the beginning of the game. So he has to be feeling very confident in this play um, to even be attempting it. And for Polar Knight, it's, a, it's always been a good drop map. It could work. Sen, on the other hand, has his Zergling speed, but not really too much else. Just one evolution chamber now starting a second. But I mean, I think it's so important that Sen, has scouted, uh, Sen scouted this. And I must say, I'm a little surprised that Select uh, busts out a build like this on Polar Knight. Because I feel, I've always said this, like Polar Knight is, is definitely designed by a Zerg player. Perhaps not so much in the middle of the map, but around this base. This is Overlord Heaven. It is almost impossible for both a Protoss and a Terran player to hide anything from the Zerg. Because you know there will be Overlords often like lurking around over here on your natural. Or there is one over here on the south side of your base. Or there is one on this entire area around it and the overload can just peek 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 and most of the time it will always see whatever it has to see so i'm surprised that select is relying on a build like this where you know if it's hidden it's 10 times stronger than when it's actually scouted yeah well i have a real question now is to see how well can he hold on to this he has the roach horn three of them are on the way just started mind you 
And here come the Helldads towards the main. There's just uh, one queen with these drones. And actually trying to well, actually attack the <laughs> Helldads for a second. That is the last thing you want to do. He's already got a couple of drone kills. I, I always like to, to see the Terrans. You see, the Helldads are in the mineral line, so you can't mind. But focusing on the queens with the medevac just out of range always feels like a smart move because a lot of Zerg players just try to target that medevac. Like, they they're, they're rarely actually attack the Helldads, and it gives you a little bit of time to attack. But Sen... He still didn't really take too much damage. He's going to be a little spore crawler, but he's still got his third base. He's still uh, got some drones there, and he's still getting his tech for his lair. But I think he's expecting maybe a little bit more mech base play. Uh, he is getting 1-1 one, one for the roaches. Not sure if he knows about this small little hit squad that's marching across the map. He's going to see it right now with these two zerglings. That's so important. And he's probably like, whoa, wait a minute. What's that? A few marauders in the mix? Marines, I hope you don't have Stim yet. But if you take a look at the production tab, that's something we know. Of course, Sen does not know. Stim will be ready in 30 seconds. This could be a little tricky for Sen to defend, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is a bit awkward. I mean, the roaches don't have speed, so you can't really kite the Hellbats effectively when there are Marines, especially with Medivacs, to help heal this force. And the Marauders are pretty scary as well, but Select doesn't want to risk it. There is a chance, you know, if you step too far forward Again. and that, that creep allows them to overwhelm you, but I like this. Split off another drop and force those roaches to move away. And they, uh, well, at least he's forced some lings back, but I'm not sure if they're going to be completely able to deal with these Hellbats if Select controls properly. Well, we'll see. Oh, it was a move command there for a little bit. Oh, one of those helmets takes a lot of damage. Now he's going to drop them. Uh, cute micro by select, but in the end, they're not that effective. Uh, Steam is being used. Did Sen leave enough roaches over here on the left side of the map? I think he did, especially with those new roaches hatching. And uh, Sen has done what perhaps once more looks easy, but it's not all that easy. Not take crazy damage from this uh, sort of uh, <laughs> unique build from select. Uh, most of the time when you don't take any damage from these unique builds at the start, you're in pretty good position after this. Yeah, he's still got some Hellbats in the air, but these Roaches definitely present a real threat. Yeah. The Roach speed upgrade is about 20 or so seconds away, and this will force him to pull some SCVs. Uh, we could have Sen just target down the repairing SCVs, try to deal some, like, trade some uh, of these Roaches oh, just for SCVs, bad. but the Hellbats hit the main base. Get a couple drones, not bad. Uh, well, two Hellbats went down, a Medifact went down as well. Sen hitting on the front door with this with these 1-1 one -one Roaches. Roach speed is about to kick in as well. I think this looks very bad for Select. He's down 40-50 supply you're often down in supply against roaches but where where are the units we have two helmets on the map right now only four marines uh, i'm afraid this one's over Nate. yeah looks like select just overextended himself too much i really didn't think he'd have that much power but the one one upgrades for those roaches did complete in time and that gave him just enough strength he smashed on that bunker with relative ease he saved a lot of his scvs he's got 34 mining in his main base so if, if by some miracle he could hold on, he'd have his economy, but there's just, it seems like there's probably just too many roaches here. Uh, even if it's not, Sen is going to be able to deny this natural for such a long time. Meanwhile, he's still sitting comfortably at three bases. He could even fire up 2-2 if he wants. Instead, he decides to fire up plus one melee, but he's still sending more and more roaches across the map. How is Select ever from one base going to be able to break this massive roach army? that's sitting at the bottom. He does have triple orbital, so if there's one thing like to sort of hold on to, it is the fact that he has triple orbital. He's building another armory. That has to be a mistake, right? Yeah, I, I think it's just one of those... Those automatic uh, things? Yeah, yeah, you go on autopilot when you're playing, and he actually... he uh, I guess it's just to get his 2-2, since upgrades are still so important in this matchup, but yeah, some, sometimes you just, you're just thinking, okay, upgrades are done, armory, go. And he's going to try to secure his natural. He does have those three orbitals. If he would be able to mine again from this base right here or right now while well, he was supply block for a while, there's a little bit of hope because supplies can be deceptive when they're, you know, when it's roaches against him bio. But uh, Seth has so much. He's been mining up three base for a little while. Widow Mine's getting some okay connections, though. Yeah, Sen is... Uh He's, he's got a really powerful army, but select still, man, the, the efficiency of bio with those medevacs is so good, but the next wave of roaches so looks like it should be enough to either push him back or finally break him in. Select brings the SCVs to fight these roaches. Never a good sign. No, although you mean those roaches, they already have one armor by default. Those workers do so little damage to them. The rest of these mines are helping out, but now the Overseer is here, and the mines will be cleaned up. And I feel like with that, so are Select's hopes. Sen will go on to the final match to play against Puck here at our uh, last group for the WCS America Round of 32. Yep, this means, unfortunately, Select will be eliminated. He did not have what it takes to advance from this group, Group H, which was a strong group on paper. It was a hard group to predict. 
But now, uh, well, we're getting ready for our final series today. We spoke a little bit about this before already, the potential of Sand versus Pock. I think for a long time, Pock's matchup against Zerg was the best that he had. Uh, PVT is one that he struggled in for a while, but he looked pretty okay uh, earlier today against Select. Um, his series against Pock was a cool one. It was a, uh, against Maxet, sorry. It was a cool one. It was a close one, but it wasn't enough. I'm really eager to see how Pock, in his best matchup, at least that's what we think it is, goes up against Sen, who is just in general performing extremely well against foreign players. Yeah, I am interested. We were talking about this. Puck's PVZ is pretty good. I mm. probably would have agreed with you. He's he played a lot of strong PVZ in 2013. So I kind of mentioned earlier against players like Yen and WCS, but this is also Puck's chance. You know, get that first ticket to uh, to the round of 16. It's it's a big moment for him in this series. It's crazy to think he could potentially just be two games away. Yep. A um, little bit more perhaps about that last game since we kind of just brushed it off. Uh, it was a good game by Sen. It's one of those things that like it looks kind of easy. Uh, I, th I think the fact that he scouted that armory when he did, that helped so much. The fact that those two little happy Zerglings saw those units march across the map, that helped so much. And after that, he just I think he did a really good job in splitting up his units, left enough roaches at the third, sent enough roaches at home, and select uh, send out two medifacts full of Hellbats on the moment that those the roaches were knocking on the front door. And despite trying to get bunkers up desperately in time uh, it was just not enough right now it's you know it is a weakness of the hell of hell that base builds you don't have as many mines you slow down your production especially if you go for a third command center it really just it, it puts you in a in a position and it's funny because one of the ways that a lot of players especially when i and back in the day when i was hell bad dropping in early heart of the storm when a lot of players were big roach counter attacks which is a good way to stop it because hell bats are great versus zerglings they can be a little bit tanky versus banelings but roaches roaches deal very well with hell bats I think uh, I think we saw that. Either way, guys, we're gonna head to a, for our very last commercial break of the night. It's it's getting pretty late over here in Europe. What's the, what's the time? It's we're, 2 a.m. We, we passed 2 a.m., but it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying uh, the games as well. Once more, let us know. Hashtag WCS at Twitter. Tweet about the games. Hopefully, you guys are pumped for Sand versus Park. And who do you hope is going to make it? And perhaps one of you is even going to make it out over here to the studio in Cologne uh, on the 4th and 5th of April, and of course the weekend after that, which is the weekend of the 12th, where we are going to have all of our players in the final eight eventually duke it out for $25,000 first place. A lot of money on the line. Is it going to be Sen or is it going to be Puck? That is going to be our 16th player for WCS America. We'll find out after this commercial break. <laughs> 